we met with Steve Dorney at the Institute of Sound and Vibration Research at the University of Southampton. Many months ago, many months ago, Great Great Research Southampton and decided that Hampshire Dance would be interested in working with Steve on a collaborative dance science project. Dance science project. Science dance. 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 Two artists, a dance artist and a musician and composer. We wanted something that had artistic integrity. Reverberation, experiment, diffraction, reflection, timing, performance, and resonance. resonance, 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 resonance. Hampshire Dance is very interested in finding out if dance can be used to explain scientific concepts, particularly to communicate to young people. My name's Steve Dorney. I work for a place called the Institute of Sound and Vibration Research. Why I'm here is really to sort of give you a huge primer in sound and vibration so that when you see Rachel next week, you'll be more expert than she is. first thing that sprang to mind when, I, when it said acoustic science was acoustic guitar because some of my friends play it. So, so I thought, oh, maybe it will be like a dance workshop about like to acoustic music or something, but I had no idea it'd be this, but it's really, really interesting. The whole project is to work with you as dancers to think about how you could artistically interpret sound and vibration. And to do that, you kind of need a little bit of background knowledge. And that's really what this session is about today. Since you are dancers, we might as well really make use of that and try and get you thinking about how sound and vibration works by moving. Okay, big noise. How does the sound get from the bowl to you? Can someone tell me how sound works? So she hits it. So can anyone just give me some sort of explanation of how it actually gets from you, from there to you? Yeah. Waves. Oh, good. Okay. Well, let's let's collect some words about this. Okay. So it's a wave. Yeah. Excellent. You're right. Does it bounce off the things around us? Oh, it certainly does that. Yeah. And then. Yes. Yeah. So so it goes. Well, no, you're right. It goes. It goes. It goes straight to you. But it, as well, there's a route that goes straight to you, but it also bounces off everything around you. Yeah, because sound spreads out. Once, once she's hit it, the sound from that thing is spreading all around the room. Yeah. I'm not sure what to expect, really. It's all really different. I'm not used to it, like doing this. At the moment, it's a bit confusing, like how it could be portrayed as a dance. So let's try modelling sound. Uh, I'm intrigued. <laughs> I can't see at the moment quite how. I can kind of understand it but I'm interested to see how it's going to turn into movement material. That's it, it's going. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and what I really want you to see is that some bits of it are completely still and the other bits of it are pumping up and down. If we could have done this as humans in your rows, if we could have got this right, what would have happened in your rows was the echo would have gone back and forth and you'd have found that some of you were doing big movements in the row. Some of you were doing this all the time. And others of you would be standing completely still. Jump, 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 jump. Oh, what? <laughs> what you've got to do is watch the person next to you. The person in the middle's got it easy. Yeah, they just stay exactly where they are. Okay. Are we passing it on? Right, let's do it. Let's try. So, like, make get ready. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Just to remind you what you're trying to do. You're trying to model, so here's your stationary points. You're trying to model this happening. Yeah? So the person in the middle is doing the most movement. The person in the corners isn't doing anything at all. Okay? And these people are moving a little bit, but not very much. I really don't know what I was expecting. I wasn't expecting so many props and it to go into so much scientific detail. But it was interesting. It, it, I wasn't too confused. <laughs> so what you've done with this is you've persuaded it to start behaving in one of its natural frequencies. You've, if, if you like, you've made the rim of the bowl start behaving like... I need someone to keep, just remind us of this. If you just hold it rock solid, if you can. So you've made... Something in the bowl is adopting a particular shape like this. 
And it doesn't once you've started it, it doesn't take any energy to keep going. It's effortless. It takes a little bit of energy to get it going in the first place, but once it's going, once it's in its resonance, it'll go forever. Well, not exactly forever, but it'll go for a very long time. I didn't really know what to expect, so whatever. I just came in like really open-minded. Yeah, I wasn't expecting it to be so like creative. Yeah, I thought it was better than I expected it to be. I just want to show you a few things and get you thinking about how they, how they resonate. There's always anxiety when you we do talk sort of scientific subjects to people who haven't necessarily got a scientific background, especially people who might have decided at school that it wasn't for them. And you just don't know until you start talking to a group what level of knowledge they have and what level of interest. But there were certainly people in there who thought it was the basic subject was interesting, and you could see them spreading that knowledge around the group and getting them to think, getting other members of the group to think about their own school experience and bringing in ideas from school. And their background knowledge was excellent. You know, it's a really good starting point. I found it kind of surprisingly much easier to understand it, get my head around it, using like the whole dance thing and standing in a line. <laughs> it was quite good. They came up with fantastic ideas just in the space of the first 10, 15 minutes. So, you know, by the time we were halfway through the session, they were running with ideas of their own, which I think is exactly where it needs to go. Now we can sort of contribute yeah. uh, and like, understand uns a bit yeah. more, definitely, yeah. When we do the dance with the sound and vibration and stuff, I think it's going to be a really good dance. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't completely sure before coming here how we were meant to like mix sound vibrations and dance, but I can see kind of where it's going now and it should be good. First of all, we went into the echo room and we had to improvise like along the wall and see how our body sounds like sounded different. And then we went in partners and like bounced off each other and tried to imitate like sound waves sort of doing that. Yeah, like TikTok sound. Yeah. And it was really weird, like echoey, and everything you said just carried on forever. And we had to talk really quietly, like if you spoke too loud, it just yeah. echoed and echoed, and you can't hear what anyone's saying. And then the noise builds up, and then all of a sudden you've like lost it. It's crazy. <laughs> We came in here and um, it was really weird. Yeah, it was, it was like <laughs> creepily quiet. Your body kind of thinks, like, where, like, where's all the noise gone? This is an anechoic room. It's literally no echoes. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> See. Okay. I thought, I don't know. So you just expect to hear it louder, but it's pretty. Like, it like it sounds like it's in like a tin. Do you know when you shout into like, <laughs> yeah. a bottle? It's like, yeah. sort of like the reason for like the shape. Just like the triangles at all. Yeah, there is. That's a really good question. Anyone want to answer it? Anyone have can anyone think why it's like that? Think about what the sound's doing. So Ellie, or if I if I talk, if I'm talking to that direction, what's gonna to happen to the sound as it reaches the wall? Bounces off. Well the point is you want to try and avoid any of it coming bouncing straight back. Oh yeah. So so you, so you have very, very small surfaces at the front that it, it could come back out. What you want is the sound to bounce off these bits into the air. Because do you remember last week we were talking about how sound dies away quite quickly when you shout? Yeah. yeah. What you want to do is persuade the sound to go to bounce off these things into the air gaps in between and run out of energy so it doesn't come back to you. Mm 